watch this. Wallop. Look at that crab, man. That's a crosswind right there. Yeah. Oh, man, look at that. That's a bumpy ride up, man. That's a bumpy ride up. Nice. Nice. Morning folks, oh hello, big lad, even the little ones are going nuts man. Wow, it's chilly up here on the roof of Van. Wait for that little 319. Uh, look at this folks, look. What did you say the other day about uh, Cathay not being... Um, Get that gear up. Get that gear up. Quick as possible. Whoa. Man, that is blustery up there over. Well, I mean, it's blustery on the ground, but uh, oh, hello. <laughs> Little lad over there, look, look at the little lad over there. A young Jerry having a go. Look, he came over and asked for a sticker. Look at him, look, look. It's because he's getting about it's because he's got to get up over the fence, you see. How's that son? <laughs> Bless him. <laughs> He's from New Zealand, came over and said, uh, watch all your shows, mate. Dun. Yeah, noisy, Ephro. Oh, yeah. Oh, 
mate. Smell that. It's wafting straight across the runway, man. Raw kerosene. Lower level photography. It's a new member. Oh, smell it. Smell it. The big guns are going out. Wow, yeah, man. Look at that crab. Yeah. Man, oh, man, that is nuts. the outboard aileron it's interesting um, watching how the wing components uh, work together in unison the inboard flapper on is definitely more aggressive than the outboard aileron look at that fighting for the line man <laughs> it's insane Here we go, here we go. First old schooler of the day. This should make quite a lot of noise and it might even go up almost opposite us. Here we go. go man using all of his uh, standard instrument departure um, height restriction I guess you would say I think it's around about 4,000 feet she is hey look guess where we're going next week non-stop aviation folks thanks for the warm welcome back by the way everybody really appreciate it great to have you here great to have you here and obviously great to have you with us in Seattle last week beans because of this crosswind component I'm guessing Oh, 
Oh yeah! That is insane, man. It's a strong crosswind. And it is a direct, well, southwesterly at the moment, is it? Or that looks more south, uh, southerly than uh, whatever it is. It's fun! I tell you, I don't know if it's looking dramatic there on the screen, but that climb out is very bumpy. So I guess that's a rudder feed, is it? Would I be right in saying that that's a rudder feed to, uh, to keep it pitched into the, uh, into the wind? Um, because obviously um, the wing components are um, flight surfaces uh, control the left and right literally the um whereas the rudder input would would sort of like keep that pitched keep the uh, the aircraft pitched into the wind just crazy man BEA due back of two 35 Roger Slater say Neil Ward Loveland Museum at Seattle Simon Barrett good morning Gary Langley great to see he throw chock a block again not, not just chock a block but noisy hello big lad yeah it's going off Hello. Here we go, folks. Here we go. First one of the day. Teresa Tinworth, uh, San Sharma, Rob Ashplant, Green Acres, Jeff Anderson. Good morning, folks. First. <laughs> 
just about. <laughs> just about, I tell you. It was hardcore waking up this morning. Well, I mean, it wasn't TV went off in the normal way, you know, like it always does. Kieran Knoll, Sue Cruz, Helen Clapp, Andrew Cruz. Sim Zima, Musaba. Departures. Now watch this. You might see the ailerons really going at it now as she climbs out. Watch the outboard. Whoa, man! Look at that! Wow! That's insane, man. It's a big, big fuselage and a big vertical stabiliser to catch all that wind. Tell you what, every time I look at a, a 380, well, for the time being anyway, I'm going to think of that Boeing 747 prototype model that was in the museum, man. Uh, because it was, um, apart from the engines, obviously, well, I mean, the engines were very uh, sort of like closely packed together, but it was, let's face it, uh, a prototype. Oh, hello. Who's that? Who's that? Who's that? Fetch it. Dig up. Did you get the car? Walking. aircraft just seeing whether there's that rudder movement there is he kicking that rudder left I think he is you know It's supposed to be going right at some point. Look, <laughs> that is just crazy, man. Okay, three fifty. Trent. XWBs.
Pesan. Pesan sa. That, uh, that flap there, that standalone flap there, that'll start really hammering away now. Now look at that wing. Yeah, look at that man. See the aileron and the flapper on working together. That's crazy, man. Smokey Joe! Our base is, uh, I think, around about a thousand feet, maybe a little bit less. Wow, look at that, man! Look at that. Wow, Coming out, we've got Thai Airways 777. 
Air Canada Dreamliner, Virgin 330, MEA's 321 Neo up next. Uh, Panagiotis uh, Giovas is a new member. Welcome, Panagiotis. Make sure you subscribe, folks. If you're a, if you're a new member and you want to chat, make sure you subscribe. James Milligan. Um, you want to know a good course for the fear of flying? Uh, yeah, Jerry Dyer's uh, Big Jet TV. <laughs> Virgin actually do a uh, a good course for fear of flying. Um, I think BA do as well. I think the best thing to do, James, to be honest with you, in in, in all circumstances like that, would be to uh, Google it. Um, we have heard good reports back about um, Virgin Atlantic's uh, fear of flying course. He got up quick, didn't he? He wanted to get up quick. Whoa! Wow! Now you see the uh, the speed brakes came into operation there to uh, to help um, in uh, bringing the aircraft back to stable flight. That was um, that was crazy. Little bit of a uh, speed brake input. That was nuts, man. That was nuts. It, it, it looked like it anyway. But don't forget, folks, we have, of course, got uh, stable on approach and it does go in out. A little bit of Jessica in my life, a little bit of doo doo in the day, a little bit of doo doo in the day. Wow, awesome, awesome shots, man. <laughs> Aviation James Sue Cruz. Sarah Jo, Reke Rats. Uh, Sarah Joe talking about the rugby uh, team. We, we saw it multiple times with Aer Lingus, but of course uh, that's now been taken off, I think. Um, the liver is still there, but the, the, the heads of the players is no longer there. 
Here we go, Trent 700. shaking see how the 330 handles it got a big set of undercarriage any get them up get them up Easy. Well, that's an early turn. That's a very early turn, man. Well, actually, you know what? I if it is. I think it is. It's just a mega crap. All the sound is just being blown over here is brilliant.
That is so gnarly, man. That is so gnarly. I know he's going left. <laughs> oh wow. Oh, okay. The spots are rain there. We've got some preset. I know we are expecting it. You could not have it, of course. Same thing, eh? Interesting folks, what did we mention the other day about Cathay Pacific? Um somebody said that they have been in but we just missed them. But uh, good to see a couple of their jets, albeit on remote stand over there. thousands as well man are they both one thousands yeah they are man Standby. I've just got to make a little adjustment here because uh, once we've got a rain.
got green. So we've got another element to pull into it, folks. Pre-sip as well. Oh, I think we have a hot brake, uh, or a, yeah, we definitely have a hot brake, or a failed um, wheel stop or something like that on that Dreamliner. No gear up at this time. We've seen it quite a lot of times with the Dreamliner, to be honest with you. Don't know if it's anything linked to the electric braking system or what, but um, yeah, that's not a very uh, that's not a very happy aeroplane climbing out there with that gear down and uh, yeah, what's known as a dirty configuration. You dirty old bird. Yeah, no. Crazy man, crazy, crazy, a crazy body. Here comes the rain, it's full on now. I need to cover up standby. Okay, okay. Oh, they've got to put it on the London route, haven't they? New Qatar Retro. Seven, uh, a, a 777, yeah? Nice. up above that cloud coverage into the clear blue sky above got a great climb out shot um, when I flew the uh, the Dreamliner whenever it was <laughs> was it Friday? Tuesday I, I, I can't just make up a day <laughs> then
Really? Roll that back and have a look. Just now, it's the last one that went out, isn't it? Spark, did he say a spark? This town ain't big enough for the both of us! Dun, 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 dun. Sorry. <laughs> I know it does, doesn't it? Oh. <laughs> yeah, it does, it does. Oh yeah! Sometimes the uh, the belly light reflects off of the engine cowl. It's possibly a uh, understandable. Um, oh, hello! Look at it. Intersect. But I'm crazy for loving you. Oh, bless the little lad standing out in the rain. Look. He's got his little lad lad on his camera, but if it's dry. Uh, AC 4060, the, um, the gear will go up eventually on that Dreamliner. It may be either one of two things, a hot brake or a wheel that, uh, a brake that's failed. Yeah, one of the brakes may have uh, failed, um, which is not a problem, don't get me wrong, because obviously um, you've got um, eight sets of brakes on the Dreamliner, and uh, on each wheel 
there are um, God knows how many um, pistons, calipers and pistons and discs. I think there's around about, I think there's around about between four and six discs on each wheel. So uh, as you can appreciate, it's um, it's not a, a disaster when you've got one, when you have one failure, a single failure. So there's nothing to worry about, nothing to see here. There we go, look, lots. Is this their max? Looks maxi. Looks like big engines. Yeah, that's a max, all right. Great flying on the max, I've got to say. Got some punch on takeoff. Very smooth. on the go here GP so um, I don't know whether it's making any difference at all but I've got another mic down at the um, down at the bag side so that we've um, so when I cover so when I cover the when I cover the when I cover the mic over with the with the waterproofer it means that it doesn't uh, it shouldn't affect the lower mic. John Grinham, hope to see the retro Saudi 777300 today. Oh, is that, what, is that inbound or uh, do we know what her uh, her movements are? Um, James Milligan, yeah, around about the time the Americans go out though, uh, James. It's a pretty standard procedure. B. Cal Pam, Rob, Sarah Joe, Shari Hellier, Margaret Byrne. What is KL like to fly? I'll be going to skip I'll get a Kuala Lumpur. Oh, missed that. What's this all about then? Uh, Melanie Lester sounds very clear today. That's good. Paul Skilling. Uh, Paul Skilling, strong. Say hello, wouldn't it? Oh, look! Not the one I flew on, is it, Chili? Probably not, because they've got a lot of them. I've got to say how many there were. I mean, there were loads of them. Uh, 757s, 767s, Maxis. I saw both the um, Lemon Sorbet and the uh, Raspberry Mivi. Uh, the new livery. 
It's definitely the new way that Ice and Air are going, a new direction with their whole colour coding thing. They're running it through their marketing program and everything as well. So, um, lovely, lovely people to fly with as well. I've got to say, first time flying with Iceland Air. Uh, most impressed with their. Uh, in flight service not a lot going on uh, they don't serve meals um, like other transatlantic flights um, it's uh, it's literally you buy it from the menu um, I had a ham and cheese toasted fat or whatever it was uh, roll or something um, and they did come and wake me up I asked them please wake me up with the northern lights and I did see the um, the, um, the Aurora Borealis, I actually clapped my eyes on it, folks. It was, believe it or not, I couldn't believe it. I was on the left-hand side of the plane, fully expecting it to be on the left-hand side of the plane uh, as we were flying sort of like um, east. Uh, you would expect it on the right-hand side, on the left-hand side of the plane. It wasn't, it was on the right. So we must have gone right out over the top. Um, but yeah, great to see it. Lots of people um, clambering to, uh, the whole plane sort of tilted to the right <laughs> only joking um, because everyone was asleep most people were asleep but uh, uh, the stewardess very kindly came and woke me up tapped me on the shoulder and said look uh, it's there it's there come and have a look she was very proud and very happy of her aurora borealis oh I say overhead layout which is uh, which is pretty cool um, all new and fresh seats were very comfortable I've got to say even on a, a long-haul flight like that um, and uh, yeah yeah very impressed overall very impressed with with Iceland Air's uh, service and very impressed with the Max I've got to say um, you know it's not like you know you notice oh wow it's a 
a different type of airplane or anything like that. Uh, but one thing you do notice with these big engines, with the Leap engine, is the power on takeoff and how smooth the delivery is. And it's not sort of like, you know, um, ag aggressive like the old CFM 56 engines or, uh, or the other uh, older type of um, pre-big uh, fan engines. Smash that like button, folks. United 787 as well was a good flight. That was uh, that was a great. I got a great. Uh, in fact, I, that was the gate that I that I went out of last week, wasn't it? Um, same uh, same livery aircraft as well. Went out on one of the older aircraft. Um, really, uh, really impressed with United service as well. In flight meals and all that kind of stuff going on. Uh, much like the other uh, long haul um, providers. are due to pick up folks. Okay, okay. Like I say, don't forget skip all next week folks. All members, all members show next week in that skip all. Uh, Caitlin uh, Emery, welcome back Caitlin. Paul Jones, Mac Cat Lady, Deirdre Rabbit, Chicky Armitage, good day to you Chicky, Doug Burnett, still waiting on them. One more uh, article before I send you your latest package of uh, merchandise, Chicky. Um, people waiting for merchandise, by the way, do apologise for the delays, but uh, we're trying to get your stuff out as quickly as we can. And uh, all you super class um, uh, claiming your, your, uh, your mugs as well, or your caps, um, keep them coming.
Yeah! That was crazy, man. That was crazy. Proper Trent power. The Swiss sent their 777 in yesterday, I think. Okay, we'll see if we can get a wizard. What we're looking for, folks, a little, uh, a little um, vortex below the engine. Um, as she sucks all the air in, she's sucking moisture off the ground as well. Um, just goes to show uh, how easy it is and how important it is to clear the, um, the, the runway and the taxiways of FOD because uh, these things suck in like they ingest around about a ton of air a second. So you can imagine uh, anything on the ground is going to get uh, ingested quite easily. Yeah, I don't know if the um, I think the um, I think those 737s have been uh, the layout, the interior, the cabin layout has been done for a long haul flight. There's a lot of legroom, a lot of legroom to really stretch out um, throughout the cabin as well. It's, it's, it's basically all the way through. There's obviously the um, the premium up front. Get a big face off in there in Singapore uh, this coming weekend in there between the 350 and the 777. Um, definitely um, Airbus of course, um, deb well not debuting but uh, showing off their A350 long range and of course Boeing with their 777X. Yeah!
mean, to be honest, if it's all well and good showing how uh, the manoeuvrability of a, uh, you know, throwing all shapes around the sky um, of these uh, of these big, beautiful aeroplanes, uh, and it's a wonderful thing for us to catch and see, of course. But to be honest with you, at the end of the day, the customer, all they're really interested in is uh, is the performance of the aircraft in terms of its um, fuel burn and, uh, of course, the uh, the range capabilities, um, passengers. You know all that kind of uh, interior cabin layout options and those kinds of things. Um, reading the other day that British Airways, into, interestingly enough, are not happy with the cabin layout, um, or the or the or the well, the crew are the crews are really not happy. The cabin crews are really not happy with the layout of the uh, the um, cabin of the um, of the A350 with British Airways. Um, causing them issues with um, with the long haul um, flights not so much the um, medium range stuff I think but uh, uh, giving them causing them issues in terms of being able to cater for um, for, for long haul flights um, with the with the I think it might be the location of the galleys because uh, obviously you've got a forward galley and a rear galley um, but of course um, yeah having a few problems there and we've got a mid galley as well I think from memory on the 350 I think um, as racer 321 is a new member um, if you're a new member make sure you hit that subscribe button uh, folks because we don't want you missing out on the ability to obviously uh, chat during the shows and also um, make sure that you uh, receive all the notifications for new shows. Mason Hugman. Uh, welcome to first class, Mason. Uh, great to see you here. We've got AZ, what, what, what was it? Uh, AZ, uh, AZ Racer, AZ Racer, AZ, AZ Racer, I think it is, three, two, one. And Michael Richards is a returning member. Michael, well, welcome back, Michael. Well, they use more fuel as weather is bad, Helen asked. Um, well, to be honest with you, yes. Uh, more of an aggressive, much more of an aggressive uh, amount of power being um, inputted during takeoff in these conditions. Well, actually, I'd say a lot more. It's you normally find that when it's very, very hot. Um, because of the fact that uh, when you've got crosswind component added in, I think you just need to feed in a little bit more power. Here we go.
power settings, uh, takeoff power settings are primarily down to the um, down to the to, 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 to the atmospheric conditions, really. Um, when the air is uh, when the air is thin during the summer, um, they obviously need to. Uh, there's you know the air's not so thick, therefore they need a little bit more power to ingest. Um, well, is that right? Is that right? I don't know. Um, you would have thought that during these conditions, um, they wouldn't have to uh, power up so much because the the air is nice and thick. So therefore, it's. Um, Um, crazy uh, equations in it. So how are we all doing? I hope you're uh, enjoying the remainder of your weekend, folks. Um, some people out in the Far East, obviously, will be uh, in the Australasias, uh, will be um, into their uh, into their their Monday mornings now, won't they? Let's have a look. No, not quite. Well, I don't know, actually. Yeah, yeah, Auckland is uh, 2.10 in the morning. 2.10 Monday morning. Good morning, uh, Brisbane. Uh, um, Brisbane is uh, just coming 50 minutes away from midnight. Um, eight, uh, 10 minutes past 8 in the morning in, uh, on, the, um, on the east coast of the United States. Uh, 22.10 in Tokyo. And... Uh, 410 in Moscow. I don't know. Old um uh, Devios Mia uh, is a new member. Welcome Devios Mia. I think I've got that right. Devios Mia. Devious. Oh Devious, sorry. <laughs> it's me trying to be all like, you know. You know, hey, Devios Mia! So Devious, actually. <coughs> uh, uh, Richard uh, uh, Tempero, or is it Richard. Uh, Rich uh, oh no, Roger Tempero. Sorry. Uh, Roger Tempero. Uh, he's probably from, um, I don't know, he's probably nowhere near Italy or something. I don't know. But anyway, uh, Roger, a very warm welcome to you. He's a new first class member. Paul Lawler, I think they said Galliot Door 2 might look to change in their future models felt difficult to retrofit existing models interesting Paul that's I think you're right I think that's what we're talking about is that mid galley um, and also uh, they're gonna be also which is good news we're hearing that they're also fitting out refitting their um, uh, their A380 fleet uh, what's left of them from what we're hearing which is great news Valerie Dickens, Rob, Stevie Luscom, Ian Morrison, gorgeous A350, uh, Rich Crane. Uh, good day, everybody. Hope you're doing well. Did somebody say BEA is inbound or something? 
Um... Oh, really? What, United? Wow! So I flew, it was looking pretty uh, pretty decent in good nick actually. I flew on United's first ever Dreamliner um, that went into service with them. Wow. When was that? September 2014. Sorry, Trent. Trent 800s. Smell a kerosene, man. Wow. That's because that's that kerosene smell that I'm getting is from whatever that is firing up over there. Um, can't quite see. Oh, Air Canada by the looks of it. Air Canada A330 firing up over the other side of the field. Very strong smell of kerosene being wafted over from that. Yeah, that was the... Uh... Jeff in Mass, good day to you, Lizzie Wright. An absolute pleasure, Lizzie, and thank you for your support. Um, Darren Howe, Brad Tricky, Alan Robbins. Thank you, folks. Thanks for the likes, really appreciate it. Um, don't feel that you're obliged to do, to do it, but we just appreciate it. Scott Odd, BA380, one hour out. Uh, James Clark, San Sharma. Stevie Luskin, dry in West London still. Well, that ain't going to last for long, is it? Uh, seeing off this blue, loving the wet departures, really shows the power of the engines. Indeed it does. This is when you get to see. And you wait till they land at the, at the crossover as well, folks. Um, we're going to get landings um, as well after 3 o'clock. So uh, we're going to get to see the um, awesome power of the, um, of the reverse thrusters. Mick Brent, 9, 10 p.m. in Perth and still 28 degrees. Flipping it. Um, that's almost uh, uncontrollable, isn't it? Josh McManus uh, sat at T5 getting ready on board uh, to board and take off into this mad weather. Josh, well, uh, what time are you going out, Josh? Let us know and uh, whether you're on which side of the aircraft you're on and get your torch on your phone ready if... Uh, if you um, if you're on the left hand side Cali Monkey good day to you London Mafia uh, doing good thank you uh, right back in the UK early hours and it's cold Rich Crane Melody R Edward James it's past 2 a.m. here in New Zealand James Doink um, Helen Clapp Andy Cornell Maggie uh, yes airplanes are still susceptible to aquaplaning to a degree, yeah, it would have to be really, uh, really a, a very, very wet uh, runway. Um, these runways actually, um, I think most modern runways are built with a, uh, a slight, um, 
they're actually got a dome shape to them so that the water drains off and runs off and doesn't pull. Uh, last thing you need is pooling water uh, on a runway because that is what obviously causes aquaplaning. Keith Williams, American Trip 7200, the next the park to Seattle. Okay, was that one the, one the one that we just got, Keith? Thank you very much for that. Sorry, rapid decisions. Didn't you just do like 15, 16 hour travel day from Seattle yesterday? Sunday is rest day, isn't it? Uh, rapid, yeah. Well, you know, whoa, hold on a second. That guy looked very, very much like he was off course there. The Rex Jack is a new member. Welcome, Rex. Premium member can be joining us next week. Premium, first class and super class. All classes uh, joining us next week in Schiphol. Uh, it's Wednesday and Thursday, isn't it, Jenny? Yeah, yeah, no, that's Wednesday and Thursday then. Yeah, 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 yeah. what you do or how um, how much finesse you've got when you uh, when that aircraft leaves the ground you're kind of like in the lap of the gods you've got to expect it to kick um, with the winds you know you know this the, the sort of like you get the feel of the aircraft you know the kind of way it uh, behaves and um, yeah you're gonna expect you've got to expect it haven't you Wow, lots of crabbing going on on the uh, on the southern runway for arrivals. Air action two two five seven. Wow, lots and lots and lots and lots of comments, folks. Reke Rat Paul Hodgson. I don't know if you've seen. There's a Qatar Boeing Triple Seven Three Hundred A Seven B A C. It's a Qatar retro. Oh, yeah, yeah, we, yeah, we've. Uh, sorry, I thought that was one. Was it? Yeah, we know about the uh, the retro, the new retro scheme, uh, Qatar triple seven three. Hopefully, they'll bring her in on the London route.
Batman plane. Cal Crossier, Teresa Timworth. Love that Air Canada livery. Lee Franklin, I think that Gatwick is reopening the South Terminal soon, which is another great sign. Yeah, that is good, uh, a good sign. Um, we just need uh, Terminal 4 to open up here at London Heathrow. But yeah, that is a great news that uh, the South Terminal is going to be opening up um, at Gatwick. Thank you for that information, Stephen. Um, sorry, uh, Lee. Uh, Stephen Dallamore are uh, the 320 and 390 use a faster takeoff speed today. Anyone seen faster than normal? Well, the thing is, um, to be honest with you, uh, Stephen, it might it might um, it might appear faster due to the sound um, because they seem to the the power input is uh, is more aggressive than uh, than normal. From what I'm seeing, anyway, or from what I'm hearing, it always looks a lot more aggressive with the spray and everything. Piling in, man. GWA Panda 30, welcome to premium GWA Panda. Pamela Neff, uh, welcome Pamela. And Andrew Doubtfire, free striker, welcome back, Andrew. Sharon A has just realised she's got full stripes and a star. old ride up in it. Oh, hello. He crept out from nowhere, didn't he? It's a shame we didn't get him. Uh... Oh, that was the one that we heard firing up, wasn't it? Look at that. Tom Trick. G'day Tom. Is a new member. Welcome. My Yana. Wow. I guess that's really all you can say for these. Be Cal Pam. That departure was pretty nuts. It was, wasn't it? Well, that was the Trick 7 
and there's Trent Sevens on that uh, Aeroflot jet as well so maybe the same sort of dramatic departure from that one as we just got from uh, from that Air Canada absolutely fantastic Harry Rundle loving the show with the sound as well man hope you're all doing well folks 6,000 people just now it's pitched up 6,000 people watching hit that like button folks smash it to bits quickly um, let's go let's go hit it Abby Garvey Ed Fernandez you've got to love that trip don't you you have yeah Oh, was it? Wow. Wow, look at the air. speed brakes getting involved there as well, man. Almost acting as like, you know, ailerons in a funny sort of way. Um, but uh, bring it back on track. Was it a year ago that I completed it or the year ago that I started building it? It took me about a month to build, didn't it? Period of days. <laughs> it took me about four days just to do the bleeding fuselage. But we did have a lot of time on our hands, didn't we? Oh, 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 come on, mate, come on, come on. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Turn, turn, turn. Oh, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, man. Oh, you got to. If, if, if you know anyone who's even in the slightest into aviation, engines, engineering, um, uh, um, weather, anything like that um who's just in the cool stuff share the feed now man because this is going to be awesome trent 700s in your face do you like cheese do you like cheese smell my cheese your mother Oh man, this is going to be loud, man.
second and 38. Liz Matthewman loving the tail on Aeroflot. Captain Schemo Shield. Rolls Royce is the best. Those Trent Sevens, mate, it's nothing like it, is it? It's crazy. Awesome! John Allen's really freaking the neighbours out. Speedy Robin! Never heard the noise this loud before. What on earth is actually like being there? Well, Speedy Robin, really, to be honest with you, these, these, uh, these mics are the best mics you can get in terms of mic um, manufacturer. So you should be getting a decent amount of uh, high quality stereo sound. Sorry. <laughs> they do vibrate, don't they? It does. Yeah. <laughs> Electric start. Okay, well he wants it and here it is. He's gonna get it. Kerno Dreamer. TCC. Uh, Eve Oscar, uh, 787 Dreamliner flight with uh, United was very good indeed. Thank you very much indeed. Interesting how um, how American airline, uh, well, the uh, the American carriers um, really do have a policy of of um, of, of employing um, uh, uh, folks up to literally retirement age. Um, whether that's something that um, the, uh, the, the it's not something that I've seen a lot of on British. It'd be like having your mum serving you, isn't it? Like you know, on uh, on a lot of the uh, American flights on United, it's like. Um, it was like, you know, when she came up, she was like, she was like, hello there, would she like something? Oh, sorry, I'm sorry. I'm, I, I, I thought it was a passenger trying to get in. And, no, no. It's like, what would you like to eat, lovely? <laughs> we got passenger. We got... <laughs> oh, thank you very much. Tracy Byram, very cold here in Southern Ontario. That's got to be Southern Ontario, California. Uh, in Canada, isn't it? Not going to be Ontario, California, that's for sure. Royal Brunei 787 on the move, my oh, honestly. <laughs> Yorkshire Airways. If it's not in Yorkshire, it's bloody well worth going.
Okay, that's good. You've got a little break. Quite funny what? It's doing what in Toulouse? Oh, was it? <laughs> yeah, I can hear you. I can hear you. Just, you know, obviously it's uh, quite... Uh, Oh. Uh, I don't know what that's about then. I've got no idea. Is it? Wow, haven't seen the Royal Brunei for a long time, man. Look at her, she's looking very dirty. But we haven't seen this jet for a very long time. She may well have operated out of here. She normally, her normal um, timings are uh, early morning and then uh, around about five o'clock in the afternoon she usually goes out. Well, that used to be her, uh, how grubby the doors are, mate. Bring a dreamline is going out. was it? Andy Coates, returning member. Welcome Andy. Oh, sorry folks. Sorry about that. Not the easiest thing to do when you're... Uh, Calling all cars, calling all cars. Those little IAE engines make a racket and all, don't they? Well, that's a long run, man. The drift. 
Okay, raw brunei. Gonna do a piece with them a long, long time ago. Do you remember me taking a picture of uh, that they're off? Heathrow got involved and they like, you know. Actually, Rob and I just sort of like, the whole thing just got flat as fun. Rolls Royce. stand somewhere for a long long time wow that's a long run as well Big crab. I keep seeing the BEA. Um, oh look, this is this is. I can I can use this as uh, as, as B roll jelly. <laughs> this is exactly. Uh, I can cheat here, can't I? This is exactly. The gate that I went out from on Tuesday. Friday or Tuesday, yeah, there we go. Yeah, came home on Friday, yeah. Yeah, Excuse me, flipping it. He says, Raw Brunei looks like it's been there since January the 4th. That's interesting. That's interesting. Sat on a remote stand somewhere. Maybe.
snack attack. Sue Taylor. Sue Taylor, I got an amazing shot of the wing flex. Literally right slap bang in the middle of the wing I was. Uh, and I did get a, a really good shot, not just of the wing flex. Not just of the wing flex, but also um, everything else at work as well. You know, the, uh, the flapper on and the aileron working in unison. It's almost like they've put that flapper on on the on the on the Boeing uh, because it's at that point where the wing actually flexes. So it just seems to me that in terms of uh, aerodynamics, that's the way that the Boeing has been developed or designed. The Boeing wing, should I say, um, to allow um, you know uh, perfect. Uh, synergy with the uh, with the with the flight surfaces working together because I think if they just had the flapper on obviously um, you know you have to have ailerons to control the movement of the aircraft VEA approaching Manchester Alan Robbins saying there we go oh that's very kind of you Stephen thank you very much indeed thanks for the for the likes folks we really appreciate it he's smart isn't he? Doug Marshburn tuning in from Florida USA oh their weather looks like London today wow Um, I don't know. I think it might be, you know. I think, well, not light, but... Yeah. Well, yeah. We'll be coming in on this runway, won't it? So that was me over the... Uh, over the wing I was. Gary Pitt, we have a friend who was a captain with Royal Brunei and previously with Britannia. Sorry, folks. Did lock that out. I don't know why that hasn't locked. Just obviously everything's wet, so it's um, 
a little bit more of a challenge when you're filming in these conditions and doing everything, but there we go, it is what it is. Uh, so Gary Pitt saying, we have a friend who was a captain with Royal Brunei and previously with Britannia who is now bedridden due to uh, spondylitis. Seeing that Royal Brunei brought tears to our eyes. Okay, well, never heard of spondylitis, blimey. What's that? Is that it? I hope, he's, uh, hope he recovers quickly from spondylitis. Thank you, Gary. Melody R, Rav H, Jeffrey Phillips. Did you listen to Channel 9 ATC? No. I watched the film. I found a spoon, sir! No, I watched the film. disappointed with with Iceland there is in their in-flight entertainer They've got no games got no games you can't make it Do what? Well, I did look I looked on his phone I searched solitaire on my phone and Oh, okay. Well, I just, you know, obviously I'm... Uh... Yeah, but you can't play them at 38,000 feet unless you're on the Wi-Fi, can you? Can you? Oh. Oh. Really? <laughs> oh. Vicky Denning, good day to you. Got a great, uh, a great video of the takeoff and uh, the climb out through the clouds. Very dramatic um, as we pushed out of the clouds and into the uh, into the clear blue yonder. Deep cloud, I have to say. It was very deep. How deep is your cloud? Is your cloud? How deep is your cloud? I really need to lose. <laughs> Shoot what? Look how awesome! Another great Sunday afternoon's entertainment. Kevin Treadwell, thank you. Big Jet TV on the background as I photograph my Bengal cats. Wow, lucky you. Okay. See if we can get a wizard.
that's early for a Dreamliner. Where's that going? Brussels or something? go folks you're one hour uh, before the switch over and let's hope the winds intensify a little bit Uh, local police services are very, very, um, very cheerful today. They're all giving me lights and flashes and hellos. What for this? Wow, three stage spool up there. Skyjet going out first. Uh, Steve from the UK, on what days like this, how does the wet undercarriage stop from being iced up in flight when it's retracted? Good question that actually, um, uh, Steve. Um, yeah, that is a good point, that, you know. Guessing that you know that's a very good question. I mean, obviously, um, with the airflow. The water, most of the water will be dispersed. And the brakes themselves are very, very hot. So, um, so that will dry the, uh, dry the wheel set. Here we go.
Trek powered aircraft. Just make a lot of noise. Jet Blues 321 Neo, long range. No difference in the uh, physical look of the uh, 321 and the 321 LR. Purely um, long range tanks fitted, uh, I think. Might be in the belly. Um, not the wing. Maybe. Uh, Still worried. Ben Whitaker, well caught, Jerry. May the force be with you. <laughs> Use the camera, Luke. Use the camera. <laughs> It's definitely a friction layer around about uh, 50 or 60 feet off the deck, isn't it? From taxiing. Yeah, but when they taxi the, 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 the brakes, they're on and off the brakes, aren't they? So, yeah, yeah, the brakes are hot. They're not, they're not massively hot, not like when they land, of course, but you know, during taxi, the uh, brakes are used extensively, so... Uh, they're obviously a lot cooler, and they've cooled very rapidly uh, at this point during the takeoff run. They do get very, very hot. on the, uh, the airfield of course and depends on how far you're taxiing from your gate but a long taxi um, can um, can mean hot brakes which would certainly go some way to uh, to um, to cooling off the uh, well sorry sorry to drying off the the, um, the systems but not totally of course I totally understand that but you know, um, I think the um, yeah, just the airspeed itself should blow off most of the water. I thought.
over there at the PA. Don't miss the gate, mate. Don't miss the gate. <laughs> Thought I had a Wookiee. Big lad. Bay itself, the uh, the wheel well must be. Um, I wouldn't say you know, like you know, it's not heating or anything crazy like that, is it? All right, mate. Take care, fella. See you soon. Yeah. Cheers, mate. Bless him. Soaking wet. He's off. Yeah, someone wanted the Egypt air, didn't they? Oh, hello. Okay. See, there has been instances of people um, stowaways inside the undercarriage bays, haven't they? So hmm, makes you wonder because obviously, if it's cold enough to freeze uh, water and make it, you know, freeze it, then um, there have been cases of people, obviously, unfortunately, 
um, passing away when they've been stowaways, but uh, there have been cases of people um, making it. I guess that's all down to the human being, isn't it? Down to the individual themselves and their resilience. But um, yeah, just how cold does it get? I mean, it's not pressurized or anything like that uh, inside the undercarriage bay. Um, but I think it's more a case of the um, the airflow that uh, that clears most of the the, uh, the water off of the undercarriage by the time it's retracted. Most of it, anyway. That coupled with the um, with the brakes. Definitely like between 50 and 100 feet, isn't it? Just clean this. Niraj tuning in, love from India. Welcome to all our Indian friends. I saw this parked up at gate yesterday when I was uh, oh it's just going remote. A uh, Qatar on radar. Could have dirty fuselage from all the staining from. It's literally, you know, um, it's interesting, isn't it? Because that's like a vacuum. being dispersed backwards and not really up into the undercarriage bay of course the undercarriage doors go some way to uh, protecting that but also um, yeah the forward motion of the aircraft would um, would probably clear most of the the water off of the main undercarriage leg itself and all the ancillary leads and pipes and stuff like that but 
there will always be a certain amount of water that's still uh, will still be uh, caught up in there. Here's BEA. Welcome back, BEA. Great to see that they're still continuing to use it. Well done, British Airways. Bombed by one of its own. It's gone all flipping Kate Bush on me, look. And on the wheelie, windy road, you know, it's all the wheelie. <laughs> when I needed you, I loved you too. Michael Barber is a new member and uh, going to be joining us along with all our premium and superclass members. Premium first got superclass and skip on next week. Jeff Anderson, take care. Bob Mean Street. Stick beats. It's like she's here in the room. <laughs> We do like to get their, their cars on here, don't they? <laughs> oh yeah!
Heathcliff, it's me, Kathy, I've come home. James Dobb, Jason Gimble. Gimble responsible. Kya! Nine. In. Nothing like the sound of them rollers, man. Listen to that hum. Good afternoon to you, Darren Nichols. I really admire your dedication and cheerily and cold despite it must be freezing cold and soaking wet. Well, I'm not soaking wet. Obviously, um, I do uh, I do cover myself um, adequately with um, waterproof clothing and so on and so forth. But obviously, you know, um, you just got to give it what you got. Big old stream of triples come out. Two. Okay. 
that's you're, you're picking that hum up. I don't know if you can hear that hum. Oh, I see. Get up. been in the in the wars and he plaster on his nose plaster on his engine Jet down there. I don't know if he's um, if he's coming out or um, I uh, sorry, uh, Royal Jet Didier uh, 321 is it? Oh look, look, it's a cheeky, cheeky, Wow!
we'll be planning our next uh, our next US trip next week, folks. So uh, stay tuned to uh, find out what we're where we're going to be going. Should actually do a uh, like a like a. Uh, a, 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 a football draw thing, Jilly, shouldn't we? Like out of the out of the hat. <laughs> Not a sack of love, obviously. Say it again. asking you that <laughs> okay so they finished filming in April did you say well, it's next month then isn't it it's next month got to go next month Okay, well that's cool, that's cool. Oh, oh yeah, I, no, 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 I, I'll, 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 I'll have to put that one off, yeah, 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 no, we'll have to go, we'll have to do Anchorage, that's uh, definitely, uh... okay, well that's, that's kind of good then, we'll uh, get going on that next week. Sweet dreams in the She's a new member. Welcome, Carl. First class member can be joining us next week, along with our premium and super class members out in Schiphol.
going to see some dirty landings in 15 minutes, folks. GP, can you, um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Please. We got Carl, and now Timothy Enright. Uh, good day to you, Timothy. Darren Emerton, twenty minutes of changeover. Looking forward to some crosswind landings. Mark Barr. Uh, was the tape on its engine, Mike saying? I've seen uh, speed tape on the um, on the nose cone of uh, the Dreamliners sometimes. Uh, oh, mate, it was a couple of years ago, I saw a Dreamliner, Virgin Dreamliner. Who's taking it out? So it looks like that's the uh, first officer, uh, first officer in the uh, in the right-hand seat. who's taking it out, or as they used to call it, the code. Mike 
George. Uh, welcome back, Mike. Eve Hoskin, Abby Garden, Jeff in Mass, Duncan All heading out on Dreamliner with Qatar Airways from Dublin to Phuket via Doha in two weeks. Duncan All, lucky you, mate. Wow, that's a lot of flying you got there. I don't mind trying to these blocks. Vibrates the flipping floor, folks. Inside, in the membrane. Inside, in the brain. David Cleary. No, I'm absolutely fine. Thanks, mate. The only thing that's soaked is my clothing, which is, uh, I've got waterproofs. I wouldn't come out here in me, um, in me budgie smugglers, would I? Just standing here in a pair of jeans. Can you imagine it? I mean, my feet are pretty wet, I've got to be honest with you, because I've got a really long moving shoe. shoes again, didn't I? Um, but, you know, fingers and toes and thumbs and all that kind of stuff. We're all good, we're all good. George T. Get it on.
that one, man. what we're going to get when they're coming in towards us folks okay looks like this is the last one to go out before the boys and girls do their runway inspection Dice. we've got Derek Gray the great turn Never gets old, yeah. Never gets old. Okay, so there'll be a holding pattern now for uh, for Northern Runway Operations to commence with um, landing. Zach Clayton, thank you, Zach. Audio speed quality as of late. Wow, brilliant. Well, that's road for you. That's road. Casapinka. Love me an A330. Scheduled for a full schedule in the summer. I'm booked for Orlando on July 4th. Tony McCall. Well, definitely the uh, the older older generation. Well, next new and the NG uh, is, is is something else. It? CFM 56 powered variant, should I say? I think it's best we can describe it to you. Right, and now it's quiet here at one as the as the night owls now come out. Runway inspection is imminent now. It's on! It's on! A Kevin Edmiston. Can we do an edit compilation of Trent's in the rain only? It's a bit of a, a, bit of a long shot now. Gary Gaskell, good afternoon everyone, it's reverse thrust time, it is wet, miserable weather, but we love it, when people ask me, you know, oh, you know, why do you go out in the, the wind and the rain, and, you know, you wouldn't go walking in the wind and the rain, would you really, but you would do when you're filming planes, I tell you, someone else, man, what's that GP song? Yeah, first in is Japan Airlines triple, folks. Here we go. There we go, Caitlin Emery, thank you. All planes on ground, runway change in three minutes. Dylan Lewis, Gary Gassel. That was a great bit of takeoff action. Thank you, Mark Mika. I'm from the 727 world. Uh, oh, yeah, I like the 727. Alan Robbins. Uh, good day to you, um, Jill Blakeney. Go for a hot coffee during the break. There is no opportunity to do that. Oh, my now, hold on a minute, it's gone all uh, out on the way. Windy, not you, it out of you. How could you leave me when I needed you? 
I love you too. in that direction. JC! JC Wilson, now look here Wilson, is a new member. Going to be joining us next week in Skiphol, don't forget folks. Uh, we're going to be at Skiphol next Wednesday and Thursday. Um, looking forward to that. Obviously we have a higher car so we'll be able to get to bits and bobs and places. Visit the uh, the world famous Polder Barn. Dylan Lewis, good afternoon. John Grim Grinham, like triple seven three hundred. Yeah, yeah, she's a good. Yeah, isn't she? I think that's the uh, that's the newer uh, livery. For Eva Air, I think. I might be wrong. Yeah, the older livery, isn't it? Is it? Andreas Krugel, fun show, thanks. Planes for the best, are the best for jet lag. Yeah, well, you've got to get on with it, haven't you? Um, you just got to get on with it. Mark Mika, Seattle was great. Great uh, mix of uh, eclectic mix of aeroplanes. Keith Cornell, good afternoon to you. Trevina Denny, Andy P, Simon Nil. Does the Eva Air ever move? Yes, we just never see it moving. Um, purely because she, uh, I think she may be on freight missions with that Eva Air, I don't know. You're right, Dylan. Darren Emerson, David Mitchell, sat watching with the cat on my lap. Meow. Bradley Penny Aviation, I'll be at the Polder Barn early morning. Uh, is that early morning? Yes, there we go. Chloe Whitnell, good day to you. Andy Sokolow, I enjoyed Seattle watching all those little private jets. It was a refreshing change, indeed it was. Sonia Keenan, Kenyan, 787, followed by a Singapore triple, uh, seven, um, triple seven, sorry, about 10 minutes out. There we go. Um, so I'd imagine that there will be a runway inspection happening at some point. The runway lights are on. And here comes the first one now. Let's see what we got. Oh, I'll see what we have got. We've got bleeding. Um, we've got. Oh, man. Okay, stand by. This is where it starts to get a little hit. Because it's just bleeding water everywhere, isn't it? Focus sorted out in a minute, folks. Just let's get this first one in. This wind could do with picking up, couldn't it? Easy. Shed effect.
bear in mind folks I've got to keep keep the camera pan back to this side uh, just to stop the water from getting on the lens as much as I can so uh, I do apologize for that Typical, isn't it? Winds drop right down, man. Yeah, that was cool, man. That was cool. We like that. Scotty Tarpley. Good day to you. Hope you're doing well, sorry folks. Hey, there's one of those funky um, Virgin Atlantic maintenance fans. I like that. Come on, wind. Blow. The new strobe lights that uh, cause issues with the focus. Easy, easy. So we just need a couple more knots into that crosswind component, and then we'll be laughing at the little AG and the 320 Neo. Qatar jet all the way up here. Usually down at uh,
little bit unstable this one, isn't he? Hey, way! Good lad. Oh! -ho -ho! It's a lady pilot who flew me um, on that 767 on ice and there. Oh, okay. I'm um, just getting all funky and it's getting all funky on me because it's getting drops of water. Look at that. Arc of that thing. It was, it was actually, I thought it was a Qatar jet going out from over there, but it was actually a bleeding the tail of the, of the 380. That's how tall it is. The four ports that pick up in Germany. Willis Cunningham is a new member. Welcome, Willis. New member on YouTube and a first class member, Rachel Dickinson. Timings are out on my plane finder app. Is this normal? Uh, yeah, to be honest with you, uh, Rachel, it is quite common to uh, to have... Um, uh, well, I'm filming it uh, rumbling down the runway and it's still sort of like... Um, still... Yeah, there is a delay quite a lot of times. Mark Mika, what's the temperature there? Oh, can't be more than seven or eight degrees, I wouldn't have thought. finger power to be able to uh, throw me flask my fingertips are so wheezy Yes, indeed. Um, in fact, I think I recognised the, um, the the captain of the ice in there yesterday. I think it was an all-female crew. Uh, certainly recognised her from the video that um, that's uh, that's there on YouTube.
sorry folks. I do apologise for having to wipe the screen, but it is what it is, it's got to be done. Yep, here comes the runway inspection now. Test Kit Express. Got a bit of a ramp there, isn't there? <laughs> Jeffrey Dingle, you're inbound 767 yesterday at Icendale, almost passed over my house. Why? <laughs> Someone caught me at, uh, someone caught me at, um, from the paddock, didn't they? Well, not from the paddock, but from, um, from the gas station, that was it. From the BP petrol station. Petroleum station. Steve Lealty, uh, story post on February the 11th, Snake on the plane, Air Asia flight. Wow, I know it's happened before, but that is too much of a freak out, wow. So that's a, that's a snake that's made its way up through the, um, either a, somehow, either on, um, wow, yeah, that's pretty, that's pretty crazy. It's not the sort of thing you expect to see when you, when you, yeah, this is, uh, this is, this is causing me quite a lot of issues, this, uh, pardon? Sorry, folks. Oh, no, that's a little bit better. Carl, the astronomer, is in the house. Good day to you, Carl. Um, Carl, we may... I don't know if you heard, but we are planning to... Uh, we're going to be contacting NASA or a representative of NASA next week. Uh, about going out and live streaming a rocket launch, folks. Can you believe it? Um, whatever next on Big Jet TV. But uh, yeah, hold tight for announcements on that one, of course. George Taylor. <laughs> okay, runway inspection nearly completed. Uh, David Kavanagh, no, I flew uh, Seattle to um, Keflavik and then uh, Keflavik uh, to um, London Heathrow. 737 uh, Max from Seattle to, um, to Keflavik and then um, 767 Keflavik Heathrow. I did believe it!
Paresh, good afternoon. Janine Kelly. John Merton. Okay, everybody, stand by for launch. Five minutes. Wow! Oh, can those engines clattering away? Can only be. Wow. Okay, next in, here we go. Just when I got the bleeding lens all clean. Flip it in. Hold on. I don't know, I'm going to eat this hamburger when it arrives, but I've got no idea. It's basically impossible. I can hardly grip anything. So there you be. Right. It's alright, it's alright, so it's alright. Whose is this thing? Is this uh, Kenyan? I think this is the um, Kenya Airways. Easy, sir. It's a bounce, wasn't it? Richard Sinner, absolute pleasure, my friend. I will be sitting at home. Um... Nicely done. on me mate. Come on son! John Collier, yeah. Landing was like dipping your toe in the bath for temperature. Yeah, it's good. I'm going in. It's 
Bristol single court cargo 747 arrived at Heathrow last night. Parish same. Yep, quite regular here at the London Heathrow, has to be said. The Singapore 747. Next in, the Tiddler. Oh, looks like I've got 380 uh, heading across the channel. This next one in from Edinburgh. Happy triple seven look. Nothing phases the uh, the Aer Lingus pilots. Different type of thrust reverser there. Clamshell or uh, next one in from Barcelona. Wing into the uh, prevailing wings. Geneva is next.
Caitlin Emery, I flew A320s for Aer Lingus. Wind, what wind? Yeah, well, I've always found whenever I approach, whenever I go into Dublin, there's always a bit of a windy element to it. Oh yeah, this is so. Rocket man! Easy, 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 easy. <laughs> Could be a little bit of a rookie pilot here, or just someone who's not happy with. Yay! Whoa! There we go. Got to be honest though, those Neos are—they're uh, quite because um, of the big engines. They seem to uh, be a little bit more uh, unstable on approach in high winds or in in any winds. <laughs> Quite moist today, a bit of an understatement. Helen Clap, there's Donaldson. Saint Charm, Rob, Scott Tubby, still trying to work out if the 777 X looked any bigger than the 777 300 here, but that, what a stunning looking aircraft and new big foot looks. Yeah, well, Scott, we have found out that the, um, no, the 777 X, I believe. Has no, it's not longer in dimension. It's just they've they've reduced the um, the paneling inside the fuselage of the cabin to increase the width. Sorry. <laughs> Externally, it's the same dimensions as the triple seven three hundred. That's why you wonder why they had to develop a bigger engine for. It's more, more people capacity, isn't it? Yeah, there we go. More, more uh, range. Yeah, it carries more people, carries more freight, more of, a, more of an all-up weight on the uh, on the triple seven X, and therefore, as a result of that, needed those bigger engines. And we're not bothered by that, are we? Uh, Chris Johnson, no, we've been down that road with the Rain X thing and all that kind of stuff. It actually, uh, it doesn't work, to be perfectly honest, um, because it's still, it still, it runs down the lens, it still stays on the lens. Small droplets still remain on the lens. We've tried all the different um, options for uh, keeping the lens free of water. You can't put a hood over it uh, because the rain is obviously driving. It's not vertical rain, is it? Um, so, um, yeah, just got to use the good old fashioned. Uh, I get a uh, towel from uh, Towley. Oh, howdy ho! From Halfords. Uh, that private 747 still here, Jilly. You know that, yeah, I'll tell you. That 747's still here. The private 747's still here. Yeah, well it was yesterday morning when I arrived. The Ram. Indeed it is. Royal Air Marac. And uh, we have a new uh, member. Aaron Homeyard is a first-class member. Welcome, Aaron. 
good to see you here welcome everybody if you're a new member to big jet tv make sure you hit that subscribe button folks um anybody else who wants to chat you need to subscribe so unfortunately uh, youtube um, in their infinite wisdom when you're a member when you're a new member it does not automatically uh subscribe you so um make sure you hit the subscribe button come in and say hello and while you're at it folks anyone new out there hit that like button always much appreciated right this is a uh, bigger jet now lots more for the wind to get hold of Clamshells, here they come. Yeah! That's got to be the most awesome uh, uh, rever thrust reverser. Uh, on the market that clamshell type with the um, with the Trent 700 absolutely awesome Marty thank you very much indeed loving the shows Tuning in from Kentucky. Good day to you, Marty. That was gnarly, wasn't it? Niklas. Niklas E. Loving the reverser action. Great, isn't it? I think this might be a little KLM 737. Don't forget, going to be in Schiphol next week, folks. Back to Schiphol. Have another look at that. Uh, I don't know if anybody's able to let us know, but uh, whether I know that the uh, observation deck is open, but whether or not they've still got those railings uh, about five feet from the edge or from the normal rails. If they have, it's a no-no for filming. I'll go and check that out as soon as I get there before I do anything. Rob Ash plant, 380, 10 minutes out. Simon Nock, good afternoon to you. Oh, sorry about that. Proper squelches going on. Hey! That's a food, Julie. Anything? Easy. what 
this one. Oh really? Oh okay, cool. Nice, is it? <laughs> One to the food. Oh, okay. Oh, okay, okay, that's fine then. Pedaling against the wind. Iberia. Straight down. to the newer big big fan engines how are you doing why that keeps doing that. That's the shed effect right there, folks, as they hit that taxi lights and everything blaze here for this 320. Yeah! yeah. Breaks, man. <sighs> Is that?
I bet it's only a 319. It is an all. <laughs> or 320 or whatever it is. Splendid. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Oh, is it? Okay, never mind, never mind. Okay. Alright. Well that's fine then, that's fine, that's fine, that, 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 that's okay, that's okay, that's fine. Right. Okay. Is there a pre-flight? Is there a pre-flight, GP? Is there a pre-flight? Pre like a... Pre yeah. Oh, that's... I've got to wait around all day, haven't I? I can't go anywhere or do anything on Tuesday because I've got to do me bleeding fit to fly at 12 o'clock. What's the latest I can do the fit to fly? All right. Sorry folks, flipping heck mate. Oh. Doing my nutty missus. Don't even know who they are. I know, man, I know. Oh, Mona. It's all, uh, it's all a nasty old situation I'm in here. Why is it saying what? No. Which one did you get it from, Julie? Which one did you get it from? I don't know, I don't know where that is. Is that the one opposite me? Yeah, right, okay. All right. Have you got a copy of the receipt? Okay, take a take a screen grab of that and the and the thing that says delivered.
man, this is doing my head in, this flipping thing. Come on, camera. Thank you. Easy, easy. camera in this direction because uh, it's um Jose or Jose uh, is a new member I think Jose M not Jose Mourinho, I hope. Um, Rob, Darren Emerton. Good afternoon, everybody. Locomotive. Helen Clapp. Aviation. Oh, 380. Here we go. Oh, man. It's a good job, I think. Five oh, isn't it? Just went on forever, didn't it? That was insane, man. Insane. Awesome. I think that's Kevin Holmes, is it? Welcome, Kevin. Sad show, yeah. Mentioning the horizontal stabilizer just. Uh, I think that's the uh, I think that's the turbulent air being kicked up by the reversers. Maybe a little bit of uh, shuddering from the braking aspect, but I think mainly uh, down to the reversers causing all that, uh, that 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 turbulent air being blown around all over underneath the wing. Dale Riley, Paul Skilling, John Collier, nice uh, like landing on. Raphael Levine. Mariana. Simon. No. Carmen 2020. EK30 outbound. Just pushing back. There we go.
said it was delivered actually, yeah, it said it was delivered. So, right, oh, okay. Anthony Kidd, good afternoon to you. Lenny D is with us. What time are you on till Mark Lewis asking? Well, um, we were hoping that uh, we were going to get some more intense wind conditions, but it doesn't look like that's going to happen anytime soon, does it? But by the sounds of it, we do have some pretty intense winds booked in for. Uh, <laughs> For, um, for Schiphol next week, ladies and gents. So that's a member show, and that should be pretty awesome. Thank you, running ward, Duncan 038. Hey, Jude. Uh, Jude Wright is a new member. Welcome, Jude. Being a member, going to be me welcoming us out there in Skiphole. And we're hearing that, uh, like I say, going to be some uh, pretty hectic, windy conditions out there in Schiphol next week. KLM or am I flying with BA? I don't know. Dave Muirhead. Jeffrey Phillips going to be very windy next week in southern England. Hurrah! Uh, is that uh, Gene Goucher? Uh, welcome, Gene. just followed your Twitter. Yeah, we're also on Twitter, of course. And um, feel free to follow us there. Of course, we are on Facebook. We generally use Facebook for uh, for just for streaming. Um, but our, our home is on YouTube. And of course, um, you can download the app as well, folks. Make sure, um, if, especially if you're a new member, or if you're a new subscriber, make sure that you uh, um, subscribe to the channel. That's very important that you subscribe if you're a new member. You will not be able to, unfortunately, um, I know it sounds crazy, but you, uh, you can't chat unless you subscribe to the channel. So uh, just bear that in mind. And um, But if you want to download the app as well, we do have an app which is... Uh, What's that, GP? Oh, there we go. Yeah, yeah. It's head to uh, bigjet.tv. That's our website to download the app. You can download it straight off of the website, uh, bigjet.tv. And um, that's where you'll find uh, all the information about us as well and what we do. Uh, we've got a page on there about our charities as well that we've, uh, we've raised money for. Well, I say we, it's actually uh, all our members who get involved with that um, and we cannot be um, thankful enough for that as well as obviously the the, the, the folks who've received the money from uh, from you um, believe it or not a uh, worldwide world wildlife fund has already got their money because that went straight from YouTube but we're still waiting can you believe it can you believe we're still trying to get the money to the NHS charities um, after all that time um, it is quite a surprise really 
I, I, I must be honest with you, I have always had trouble in giving people money, <laughs> um, as in presenting them the money. Um, that's what we're, we're trying to do. We couldn't do it with the World Wildlife Fund because, believe it or not, uh, their policy is that they won't get involved with anything that's aviation related. The fact that we're a media company um, means that they can receive the money, but in terms of us um, uh, uh, having any link to them in any way, which I told them it wasn't, um, the, uh, they, weren't, they weren't able to uh, do the big presentation check uh, that we like to do. Um, but it is what it is, and um, so be it. Uh, a little bit, to be honest with you, I was a little bit disappointed at that, to be honest. I think it was a little bit, you know, um, when you consider also, if you look at the WWF um, uh, 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 website, uh, they've got some very old information on there, um, you know, which is very much out of date. It needs to be updated. And um, when I did speak to the WWF, I did mention to them that uh, I'd say that the aviation sector is probably one which is uh, 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 the, 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 if along, alongside the car sector and trucks and stuff like the, the roads versus the air. Um, it's a sector that's very, very um, uh, focused on cleaning up the environment. You know, 2020, whenever it is, 20, 2030 or uh, whenever it is that Heathrow are looking to have a zero footprint, uh, all these new, uh, new um, uh, set of sustainable aviation fuels that are coming out. It's not that they're just throwing up two fingers at uh, at anyone. The aviation industry is uh, is very very focused on um, on on increasing, uh, decreasing its footprint and making um, making it a cleaner world. You know, we've got to travel. At the end of the day, we have to travel. And I dare say that a high percentage of the uh, folks who work for WWF also. Uh, either go on holiday uh, using aeroplanes and uh, um, use aeroplanes for business trips, etc., etc. So it's a little bit. I was a little bit disappointed in that, um, uh, but uh, anyway, they've got their money, and uh, we're very happy to do that. And really, it's the end of the day. I don't think the, um, you know, I don't think. Uh, oh. Oh. made it worse man you've made it worse oh my god this is just not flipping working is it Here, geeks. <laughs> Brian McCann is a new member. Welcome, Brian. Paul Robinson is also a new member. And uh, make sure you subscribe, folks. And Tracy McGee is also a new member. Uh, welcome all new members uh, throughout the show that we've had. Uh, please make sure you subscribe, folks. And that's purely for your benefit uh, so that you can chat um, make sure that you do if you don't want to chat then that's fine it's not a problem but we'd also wouldn't want you to miss out on any um
Tony Hoxton, good afternoon to you. Hit the thumbs up, please. Uh, Kevin Bart Carter saying thank you, Kevin. Yeah, hit that like button, folks. Smash it to bits if you want. Uh, doesn't bother me. Les Donaldson, Jody Bruch. Bimmer next in, Alan Robbins saying thank you. Uh, Robert Maple, are you planning on a Gatwick show? See the South Terminal is reopening next month. Well, I think that's got to be done, hasn't it? We've got to do a we've got to do a Gatwick show um, just to get down there. And uh, I know the bushes are quite tall now. I did have a recce down there a couple of months back. like the uh, I do like that livery on the bin Yeah, aviation in 4K, I kind of agree with you from a plane spotter's point of view. Gatwick is not very um, is not very friendly. It's all stuff through the fence. Um, fortunately, we do have that position at the end of the runway where uh, we've, um, we've checked out who owns the land there. We've checked in with the local authorities. All we do is we let the local police know that we're going to be there and the security teams as well. Um, but uh, at least we can see over the fence. However, there is some uh, some new growth there, which uh, would obviously need to be addressed. Did they? Just a lazy sod, isn't he? He's just a lazy sod, mate. Yeah, yeah, it's just a lazy sod, mate. was a bit bumpy in it inbound wasn't it let's just keep the, let's just keep the uh keep the camera See you all here. Hope you're doing well. Hope your uh, weekend has been good. Yeah, we 
been to skip hole um, God knows how many times we uh, we know exactly where we're going thank you very much <coughs> flipping heck Seriously, becoming quite boring now. This thing with the See that power up. Easy. She's down. Strut needs a bit of recharging, doesn't it? It's quite bouncy, that was. Uh, Lizzie Wright. Well, yeah, you... I don't know about making up a portfolio, Lizzie. I think it's just a case of uh, watching everything that we do and uh, identifying aircraft. You know, um, you will in time uh, get to know them.
Okay, Dale and Harsh, you have just read my mind. Hot tea, rum, and a good night's sleep. Uh, <laughs> folks, if it's all right with you, I think we're going to call it uh, sort of like running right down to the uh, to the bare bones now with the uh, with the wipes and all that kind of stuff. Um, so, if it's all right with you. I'm, I'm, I'm hanging a little bit I've got to be honest with you um, jet lag and all that kind of stuff don't want to you know don't want to uh, sort of like you know don't want you feeling sorry for me or anything like that I'm just uh, just being honest and um, so I think we're uh, we're going to call it but um, don't forget we'll be back at Schiphol we will obviously make a put a full announcement out about it and we will um, welcome all of our premium first and super class members uh, out to Schiphol this uh, this coming week we'll let, let you know the times and the days uh, tomorrow probably <laughs> So we'll uh, we'll leave it there then, folks. If that's all right. <laughs> um, thank you to everybody for uh, for your company. Hope you've had a good day, um, and uh, welcome, of course, to all our new members. And thank you so much for uh, for your support and your great comments and your lovely words. It is great to have such a wonderful, warm family of people around us. Thank you to Jilly once again, because don't forget that Jilly has been on the same time zones as I have as well, as have all of you folks as well. A lot of our members, thousands of you guys tuning in uh, in Seattle. So uh, I guess you're a little bit uh, uh, drained as well. But uh, anyway, listen, look after yourselves. We'll be back next week with a member only show from Schiphol. If you haven't been there before with us, you'll enjoy it. Uh, we've got some great positions there. Uh, we do understand it's going to be high winds, so it's likely that we're going to be hunting down the the uh, the, 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 the the runway uh, the runways uh, that are most used uh, for landings. Um, but um, and that will be one of those will be the polar barn, of course. But uh, anyway, look after yourselves. Thank you, everybody. Uh, sorry, I'm I'm leaving a little bit early, but. Um, it, it is what it is, but uh, we'll see you next week in Schiphol. Thanks again. Take it easy. See you. Bye-bye. Okay, let me hang for a little bit too, Pete. Okay, that's that. That's that. Put that in there.